Awesome. So thanks so much, Margot and team, for putting this amazing event together. So I want to use the next few minutes to tell you a bit about climate change. So climate change, as mentioned earlier, one of the most pressing issues that we as a society are facing today, and we're already feeling its effects from storms to droughts to fires to flooding. These impacts are being felt globally, and they are disproportionately impacting the world's most disadvantaged populations. And this creates a real imperative to act quickly on this issue. Um, in particular, according to the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, we as a society need to hit net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 in order to avoid some of the worst impacts of climate change. And this is going to require us to rapidly transform virtually every sector of our society, from energy to transport to buildings to agriculture and so forth. So given that we're here at a kind of data science uh, related conference, then a natural question to ask might be, are the ways that you know, data science can play a role in actually helping us to address climate change. And a couple of years ago, a uh, group of collaborators and I came together and, and put together this paper called Tackling Climate Change with Machine Learning, which tried to answer this question. In a succinct you know, 100 pages or so, we uh, talked about the different ways in which AI and machine learning can help, for example, decarbonize our power systems, our transportation systems, help us build more resilient societies via disaster response, and also strengthen things like policy, economics, and individual decision making that'll be necessary to actually implement these kinds of strategies. And in that paper, you know, there are lots of different themes that came up in terms of how machine learning could play a role, from you know, distilling raw in data into actionable information, doing things like turning satellite imagery into in estimates about where our solar panels are or what the crop cover is in various agricultural lands to help us better adapt, or turning policy texts into actionable insights that could enable us to then form better policies later on. Also areas like forecasting. So for example, um, the WIDS Datathon was focused on this topic, right? How do we get more foresight on things like weather or solar power production or things like this in order to enable us to act more quickly on climate? There are also lots of places where machine learning can help improve the operational efficiency of a system. So for example, more efficiently operate the heating and cooling systems in our buildings, which make up about half of the emissions associated with buildings. Predictive maintenance, so things like identifying faults in our railway infrastructure in order to actually help that infrastructure run more smoothly and as a result be kind of relatively more competitive compared to non-public or more fossil fuel transportation. Accelerating scientific experimentation, learning from, for example, our past attempts to synthesize batteries and then recommend which experiments are most fruitful to try next in order to speed up our process of creating the best battery. And doing things like approximating time-intensive simulations, taking things like climate models or um, city uh, urban planning models and learning fast approximations to them in order to enable us to run them at more granular spatial scales that are more suited to decision making. So this is kind of you know, a whirlwind tour towards, you know, through where machine learning can be used for climate action as a whole. And you know, the, I also encourage you to look at these summaries that are linked on the slide if you're, encouraged, if you're interested in poking through them. And these present a lot of really exciting opportunities to really leverage machine learning and data science to address, again, what, what is one of the most pressing issues of our time. Of course, there are some caveats here, right? Machine learning is not a silver bullet. In those places where it is applicable, for example, some of the examples on the slide, it's not the only component. There are many other pieces of the puzzle, other technical components, societal components, policy, things that need to come together to make these applications fruitful. And as we've heard throughout the conference today, it's really important that applications are grounded in the communities and with the stakeholders who would actually use them or would be affected by them. And so collaborations and partnerships across different sectors and across different geographies are very key to making sure that these things go forward. So a lot of the opportunities um, on this slide are actually deployable today. We can really use today's machine learning and data science techniques to actually move forward on them. At the same time, there are many ways in which actually there are gaps in machine learning and data science tools, where in order to address some of the critical challenges in climate change, we actually need to improve the machine learning tools themselves to be suited to those areas. And so my research actually looks at this in the context of electric power systems. 
So when I talk about electric power systems, I'm talking about the systems through which our electricity is produced, then transported along lines and electrical equipment before eventually being consumed by end use consumers like us. Power systems make up about a quarter of greenhouse gas emissions today, and decarbonizing them is gonna involve in, um, you know, integrating more renewable energy like solar and wind, as well as potentially other low carbon sources of energy like nuclear. And kind of making these large scale changes to the system can be difficult for various reasons. Specifically, power grids are physical systems that we need to make sure keep operating in a stable way. And they're subject to various kinds of physics. So when you put power into the power grid, it goes along the lines in electrical equipment according to those physics. You also have various kinds of hard constraints, things like the fact that you need to keep your power grid near an electrical equilibrium, or that you can only change the amount of power that a generator is producing from one moment to the next by so much. And layered on top of that are all sorts of decision-making processes. For example, given some estimate of power demand, how do I schedule supply subject to all of these different hard constraints in order to do something like minimize prices? And so traditionally, how power grid operators deal with all of these considerations is by using traditional optimization and control techniques. These techniques are really good at enabling you to write down your physical constraints and actually satisfy them when you're operating your system. But the challenge we're starting to see is as we start to contend with the variability uh, that you know, solar and wind and other time-varying renewable energies bring, as well as the increased scale as we kind of install and manage more devices like electric vehicles and batteries, these existing optimization control techniques are really struggling to kind of deal with this scale. And so tools from data science and machine learning have been proposed as an alternative because these techniques are really good at ingesting large amounts of data and very quickly enabling us to make deci decisions in a way that's fast and scalable. But the challenge is that today's machine learning tools are really bad at enforcing all of these physics and hard constraints that I just told you are so important to making sure that the grid doesn't you know, black out. And so what my research looks at is how do we bridge these two worlds? How do we actually develop machine learning methods from the ground up that inherently capture these physics and hard constraints that we need to capture on electric power grids? And so my work presents a framework called optimization in the loop machine learning. And this is a framework to actually write down your physics and hard constraints and decision-making procedures as optimization problems and then embed them into, for example, our machine learning models or into the objective functions that the model uses to learn. Now, some of you who are kind of you know, in the machine learning space, you, you might have think, wait, optimization and machine learning, do you mean things like gradient descent and deep learning? Actually, how do we train machine learning models? And I actually mean something different. I basically mean we can find ways to write down the physics and hard constraints that we care about and actually embed them into our machine learning models. And so how this works, so I do this in the context of, of deep learning. So we can think of machine learning, right? You have a machine learning model. It has various kinds of inputs, outputs, and various adjustable parameters that you're trying to change in order to improve the performance of your model. And my work looks at this in the context of deep learning, where our machine learning model is a neural network, which you can basically think of as a bunch of nonlinear functions with parameters that are composed together. And where these parameters of the model are updated based on information about how good your model, how well your model is performing, the kind of derivative of the uh, loss function of your model with respect to parameters. And so one thing that comes up from a technical perspective then is that every single component of your neural network, so every single function within it, the objective function that is used to actually train the model has to be differentiable. I need to be able to tell you how to take derivatives through it in order to make it compatible with how a neural network actually learns. And so what my work says is, well, can we somehow throw power system physics into this mix? Can we somehow write down power grid physics as an optimization problem and somehow figure out how to embed this optimization problem into our neural network as a layer 
in a way that then enforces certain behavior on how the neural network actually behaves. Um, and I'm not going to go into the technical details of how this works, but basically we kind of leverage something called the implicit function theorem um, to actually differentiate through the e uh, equilibrium conditions of our optimization problem, with the upshot being that we actually figure out a way to make putting an optimization problem into a neural network compatible with the way that a neural network actually learns. And in the context of electric power systems, this can be used in various different ways. So for example, on power grids, we want to often construct these dynamic controllers for you know, power generators or batteries or solar inverters or other components that are on the power grid. But we want to make sure that the way that we're controlling these devices is compatible with satisfying the safety criteria and the physics that we have on the power system. And so in this setting, we're looking at something like you have a machine learning model where the model is taking in some information about the state of your electrical grid and then outputting some kind of control action. And what we do and what the hope is is that if we can somehow write down the safety criteria and the physics the model has to satisfy as an optimization problem, then we can actually embed that optimization problem into our machine learning model, as I showed before, and have this now you know, controller, machine learning-based controller, that's learning from data, but is still inherently making sure that its output satisfy the physics we need to satisfy. And so this is what some of my work looks at. Some of my other work looks at a different setting, the setting of prediction. So we're often creating predictive models um, in uh, settings like power grids and many other settings, right? Where we're trying to do something like predict electricity demand using historical data in order to create a prediction. And often our predictive models are trained to kind of optimize for some notion like accuracy. Can we come up with a demand forecast that is as close to the actual demand that we see on the system? The challenge, though, is that not all mistakes are created equal from the perspective of our decision maker. So for example, if we overpredict electricity demand, that might cause us to overschedule electricity supply. Whereas if we underschedule electricity demand, that might cause us to underschedule electricity supply. And whereas an overprediction and an underprediction from an accuracy perspective, what we usually use, are equivalent. Overscheduling and underscheduling power generation, the two different results of those two different types of mispredictions, have significantly different consequences. Underscheduling power, for example, means it can be really hard to recoup that power, and again, you might be subject to blackouts. And so, what my work looks at is can we actually write down the relationship between our prediction and this downstream decision making process as an optimization problem? And again, do this in a way that's compatible with how neural networks learn in order to then allow the neural network to update its parameters and avoid making mistakes that are particularly bad from a decision making perspective. So this is just one example of the many different ways that you know, machine learning methods can really be improved in order to actually work well on, for climate relevant systems. So I've talked about, for example, physics informed robust machine learning, but there are lots of different ways in which we need to make methods more interpretable, quantify uncertainty, help them generalize in various ways to make them better suited for climate change related problems. And I think what's really important to think about here is that basically these methods will look fundamentally different when they're employed to actually address the challenges that we need in climate change domains versus maybe some of the large scale image and text areas that we often see machine learning being deployed or developed for um, kind of more traditionally. So the demands of the climate change domains should really shape the directions of the machine learning innovation. And so I just want to leave you with my technical vision here, which is the creation of next generation machine learning methods that are well suited for use in climate and energy domains and are also impactfully deployed on the ground. Thanks so much. Thank you.